more fenders hanging on the wall. They're bolted on. Making some progress on the Suburban, trying to get some motivation. It uh, barely gets warm enough to do body work, so do a little bit here and there on the warm days. one of the problem areas right there so uh, they sell this piece it actually uh, they gave you all the way back here so you could cut it right there and replace this whole section I imagine if you got hit or something but it wasn't bad it was only about 40 bucks so Instead of trying to fix that, that whole corner was just chewed right off. So, cut her out, welded her on. I'm on uh, my second coat, trying to smooth it out the best I can. Doesn't look too bad. This, uh, before me, before I owned this, it was definitely uh, hit hard in this quarter. Um, you know, it's it's got its little little wrinkles and stuff down it. This this door too was a real problem. Um, Tried to uh, smooth it out a little better. Sort of, uh, it was a good sized dent right there that I filled just recently. So I'm trying to just smooth it in, but it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be, you know, Richard Rollins perfect, but uh, be good enough for me. This, uh, another problem was. A lot of Suburbans, they rot up here, and uh, you probably remember from before, it was um, some pretty good sized holes up here on both sides. So, down the road, you know, I imagine I'll probably uh, do a little more professional job, if you say, you know. Um, get the pieces you know what I would need was would be these pieces cut out from another Suburban that was good and then weld them in but for now I uh, grinded it all down and I got in there and I shot this uh, rust reformer stuff kind of like on the inside and kind of got it all up in there to sort of slow it down this side was worse. I'm still working on it. But, um, shot all that stuff in there, and then, of course, used the old Bondo to smooth it out. But, when I painted it, uh, eight years ago now, I just left this trim on the tailgate. Because, uh, this had. This is a Sierra Grande, so at one time in its life, it had uh, all the nice trim that went all the way down, but I think when they got into the accident, uh, they lost that trim, and then I think the guy before me just ripped the rest of it off, and uh, all the little holes are all filled in and stuff, but... He also ripped the roof rack off too. It had a chrome roof rack at one time, but <clears throat> that really pisses me off because I'd love to uh, get the uh, you know the luggage rack rails that go on top. These are uh, aftermarket fenders I bought a long time ago, and. Uh, 
took some doing but I believe I got them pretty close this gap is a little tighter there than down there but did some adjusting and shimming and uh, pulling and prying and came out pretty good the other side really lined up uh, way better for some reason you know the gap is totally perfect not really gonna run uh, inner fenders right now they were all rotted took them out threw them away but I'm not sure if I'll buy some down the road or uh, just kinda I might try to make some custom ones you know just for the fun of it but this isn't this is pretty much retired from you know um, shitty weather driving it's just gonna be a summertime cruise and it's funny uh, back in the day going to all the swap meets with my old friends we uh we were always looking for chrome stuff you know we we never liked that uh you know those old gold uh moroso valve covers you know the anodized ones um never wanted those but now it's uh i was painting the wheels for the fun of it those are uh, suburban wheels are on there if you didn't know but um, this simple uh, rust-oleum you know just like a metallic gold that you figure would uh, come out like shit you know you spray it on it kind of it kind of looks fake kind of doesn't look too good but then I figured out that if you uh, if you put a million coats of clear on it afterwards, it comes out really nice. So I tried the uh, air cleaner first because I've had this forever. And, uh, you know, it just kept rusting over the years. And I would uh, steel wool it and bring it back to life. But somehow I still hung on to it, still on the Suburban. And uh, so I painted that and then... I said, you know, I'm going to look for a set of those uh, Moroso Tall gold valve covers. Well, to my surprise, I went on eBay, and it's not just me that is in love with those now, but it seems like everyone and their brother loves those things, and that's what very desirable part right now uh, for the old school hot rods and stuff. So... Who knew, you know? I was just uh just a ship bum in my my small garage thinking I like that gold and that's what I want to do on the suburban and then little did I know they're getting a million dollars for these. I mean, seriously, guy wanted like 300 was the current bid on uh just a set of used ones that had scratches. So I said screw that, took off the stock ones. Clean the shit out of them. Million coats of gold, million coats of clear, and uh, there they are. Some new gaskets, and uh, the new headers are all on. These Flowtech headers now, they really stepped up their game. They got like a thick flange on them now. Back in the day, they were very thin and they would always uh, warp and leak and stuff but so anyway I got got all that buttoned up and uh, I did a lot of cleaning up on the top of the motor you know I took a lot of wiring and redid it and you know hit it in behind and different spots and uh, cleaned up some vacuum lines and you know just hit, just hit it with some uh, some of the uh, high heat paint that I put on the headers, I just kind of shot that in on the intake to sort of, you know, 
make it look a little better so it doesn't, you know, draw your eye to, uh, you know, rusty looking crap. And, you know, of course I painted, it's dusty now, but I cleaned all the control arms up, painted those, and painted the firewall and the cowl. So, just sort of, uh, you know, not doing this uh, full show car restoration. You know, I'm just cleaning things up and uh, doing what I can on the budget that I have. You know, doing things that don't cost a lot of money. But, you know, they go a long way. Oh, I also threw some new, uh, new set of AC Delco plugs in it. And, uh... You know, it's coming along. I got a few things to do. I got a new uh new speedometer cable for it. Maybe I could actually have a working speedometer this season. But you know, still get a clean you know, it's just stuff like this. I don't mind, you know, you clean it up and uh I use this stuff's great. I mean, these tall cans of uh, Rust-Oleum Professional, and uh, I use the semi-gloss black, and I mean, the stuff goes on heavy, and uh, it has a really nice finish to it, in my opinion. I once painted a whole truck with uh, cans of that. So. so the main problem areas of rot on this, um, you know, where the bottoms of the fenders were totally gone, uh, that rear quarter, and uh, the spots on the roof. The rest of it on the other side is uh, pretty solid, you know, there's uh, not a lot of big, big areas, I'm just kind of filling in the... Uh, the little holes that you know where the roof rack once was and stuff I really didn't do back then when we uh, when I got it it was like primer spots and you know different color grays and uh, there was some red showing through because it used to be red from the factory it was like a nice uh, nice burgundy but We brought it in and I basically just went around this thing and scuffed it up. You know, I just scuffed it and a couple of, you know, little spots where the trim holes were, I filled them in, uh, a little bondo here and there. And, uh, you know, there was no rot on this thing eight years ago. I mean, very, very small little, you know, spots here and there just starting that, uh, you know, I ground down and cleaned up, and uh, we took uh, the Rustolian Professional. I bought a gallon of smoke gray, and it was it wasn't smoke gray when we tried it. It was like really light gray, almost like that light gray primer. And uh, so we just kept on mixing black in with it in a five gallon bucket to uh, you know darken it down. And, uh, you know, that was the color. We kind of, we just kept walking around it. Me and my old friend Dan, we uh, kept passing off the spray gun to each other when we get around it and just keep on spraying that gray on there. And it, when we were about to spray it on, a friend of mine uh, brought by some, like, of that expensive 3M hardener and uh, insisted that we mix some of it in with the Rust-Oleum even though it says you don't need to mix in hardener with the Rust-Oleum so we said screw it and just did it anyway and uh, it actually came out like shiny we were very surprised but it was kinda of fun you know you can see some spots still even after that long. 
See that? Still shiny. I don't do uh, collector flanges anymore because uh, those things always piss me off and leak. So I cut them off and I weld the extensions right on. When I put that header in over there, it was funny. It, I wasn't even looking and it's it slipped right on to that exhaust. It was it was exactly in the exact spot that it needed to go. So that's all set. I have the other front pipe that goes from here, but the uh, the whole exhaust, you know, whatever he used, it lasted uh, a long time. It was it was pretty much brand new when I got it, but I ended up changing the mufflers and putting these long cherry bombs on. And that was the weak point. They kept rotting out and cracking on the inlet and outlet. So I kept welding them back on, you know, putting little pieces in and stuff. So I got to get some new ones of those and we'll be golden there. This still has, uh, still has this undercoating on it from Canada. It's actually still got some stickiness to it. So, it's coming off some areas. Still all up on the floorboards. Floors are nice and solid. These days, uh, can't find much to watch on YouTube. I don't know about you guys. I uh, stopped watching a few popular channels that I liked for years because uh, just you just I don't know you get sick of the the foolish talk. I mean, some stuff's funny, but I don't know. I don't want to sound like an old fart, but you know, or you know, a no fun Nancy or something, but. It just seems like a lot of these channels, uh, guys just, you know, it just, uh, I, I like the content of the channels, but I can't stand the, the way that the, uh, the guys make themselves sound, I guess, uh, you know, it's, it's not the way they really talk, but I don't know. I, uh, I've been looking for new stuff to watch anyway. And, uh, I came across, uh, this channel, DD Speed Shop, guy's up in Manitoba, Canada, and, uh, he's got a little two-car garage, and he's just, uh, I mean, I can't believe that it took me this long to find the channel, because I've really been enjoying, uh, catching up on the videos, um, uh, but the guy reminds me of myself a lot in the way I do stuff. And uh, he's a, he's obviously got a lot more skill than me in um, building hot rods, and he's got way cooler cars. I mean, this guy's got you know stuff everywhere around his yard: uh, fifty-five Chevys and fifty-sevens and Chevelles and Novas. It's pretty cool. But he, um, I was watching it, and a lot of the stuff he said, you know, it's it's for you know the the guy that, you know, doesn't care about the uh, fancy, you know, million dollar speed shop stuff and, you know, body work and, you know, $5,000 paint jobs and this and that. He's he's spray bombing cars and, and just rattle cannon everything and a lot of the little touch-up stuff and detailing he does and things he says is uh, is definitely what I'm all about, so... I'm enjoying it anyway, but there you go. Maybe maybe he'll watch this. I don't know, but a uh, little plug to his channel. Check it out. DD Speed Shop. 
you know, we're just out here in our little garages and, you know, we're doing little stuff with a spray can and uh, some cheap tools and, you know, we get it done and uh, you go inside and you go to bed and you just think about it and you're like, wow, I am so happy with the way that that air cleaner turned out. And that's just uh, the little simple things in life that, you know, you appreciate and, uh, when you finally get it done and you go for a ride and you're up at the coffee shop or the gas station, someone says, man, that looks pretty good. That looks nice. You know, where did you have it done? where did you have it painted? Like, oh, I, you know, did that in my garage with some spray cans, some Harbor Freight tools, but, um, I think that's what it's all about and on another note probably want to look around once in a while you know out on the street because uh, one day you might see this this face in this face and when you do you're gonna say he told me he'd see me on the streets